Sa nama je danas Johan Terbeist iz organizacije RIPE NCC. Mnogo ima poznato da ova organizacija upravlja velikom mrežom senzora koji su postavljeni u velikom broju mreža širom sveta i služe za osmatranje saobraćaja i problema u internet mrežama. Ova mreža po imenu Atlas uskoro će doživjeti neke promene, a o tome šta se sprema pričat će nam u narednih 20 minuta upravo Johan Terbeist. Molim da ga pozdravite aplauzom. Johan Terbeist, please take the stage. You have... 20 minutes. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. So uh, I'm Johan Terbeist. I'm a, a senior software engineer at the RIPE NCC. I've been working on the RIPE Atlas for the last uh, 10 years. And today I'm going to give you a very, very short introduction of what RIPE Atlas is for the three people that don't know yet. And uh, then we'll be looking into some upcoming changes uh, for Atlas, both in the back end and the front end. So, quick introduction. RIPE Atlas is a global active measurements platform. Uh, the goal is to view the internet reachability. We have probes hosted by volunteers, and all our data is publicly available. Uh, we run, the moment you connect your probe, we run a bunch of global measurements toward root name servers. We call these built-ins. There are 165 uh, current built-ins. Uh, we also run more regional uh, measurements. Those are probe measurements towards the anchors that we have. Um, and anchors themselves also measure each other in a mesh network. So every anchor measures every other anchor. Uh, then the users on Atlas, they can perform customized measurements. We currently support ping, traceroute, DNS, SSL, TLS, NTP and a limited version on, of HTTP. Uh, more on that later. We have 12,000 worldwide connected probes, uh, 800 roughly uh, RIPE Atlas anchors. Anchors are just like super probes. They can run more measurements, they have more capacity, and they're intended for companies to be placed in data centers, while probes are more intended for people to place in their homes, home networks. We collect about 15,000 results uh, per second, and we currently have roughly 35,000 measurements continually running. Um, if you want to run a probe, but you cannot get a hardware probe because we're out of stock, or maybe it's easier in your situation to run it as a software package, you can do that. We have software probes. You can run them in a VMware environment. You can run them on, a, on any uh, VM. You can run them on Raspberry Pis. Maybe you have a server at home, you can run them there too. Um, so what I really want to talk to you about are the changes to the back end and the front end. Um, people that have been using Atlas may have noticed that over the last six months or so, we've had more problems on the back end than we usually had, more outages, disturbances, etc. The reason for that is that our HBase cluster currently is uh, getting really full. Uh, our operators are telling us that by the end of this year, early next quarter, it will be completely full um, and it's causing instability. The hardware is also five to 10 years old and really needs to be replaced. So we started looking at changes to our backend. The first thing we did was we looked at, can we move the whole thing to the cloud? Let AWS or some other cloud provider take care of this. It turns out that's not an option. Uh, that doesn't actually solve uh, any of our problems. The other thing we did is, well, then we just built a new HBase cluster on-prem like we have now. Uh, that turned out to be also not possible because it's simply cost uh, prohibitive. It's just way too expensive. So what we did is we started looking at usage patterns. And what we found out is that 95% of our users only care about the last month of data. The only people that want to have data that is older than that are generally researchers. And they were causing most of the issues because we're getting a lot of requests for our current data for the last month. And then we're getting a researcher or two that says like, download all the trace route results from 2016. That was causing major, major problems. So what are we going to do? We're going to move from one big HBase store that contains all our data. We're going to split it up into two parts. They're gonna be a hot uh, storage which essentially is a new HBase cluster. It's going to be smaller than the current one. It's going to contain only one month of data, and it will be based on modern hardware. 
uh, all the other data will be offloaded into an object store. Most likely that's going to be S3, but any uh, object store in principle will, will work. In the next six months to a year, we will slowly move out all the historical data from the current HBase cluster into the object store. And the APIs that you're used to using with Atlas will keep working the same way. This should be, in principle, uh, a non-invasive action for the users. You will not have any downtime or issues. Everything will work the same way as it did. And hopefully, uh, the, the new HBase cluster will be much more uh, faster and much more stable. We're also working on new measurements. So uh, something that's been requested for a long time is the ability to run HTTP measurements. Uh, we've always said that's a little bit tricky because of privacy issues, um, potential problems for people in case, you know, like you want to do censorship research, uh, you use, let's say, Iranian probes to go to particular websites that could cause problems for a probe host. What we're going to do, we're going to implement a system in the future, in the near future, where probe hosts can designate their probes and say, you can use my probe to run HTTP measurements on. And then when somebody wants to schedule an HTTP measurement, he can do that, but only using probes that have opted in to this particular measurement type. We're also looking at uh, start TLS measurements. So you can check, for instance, if uh, login flow for an email server works correctly. And very soon, we're going to upgrade uh, our TLS measurement to also support TLS 1.3. Um, currently, this is being worked on. We are waiting because we have a, a CI-CD pipeline for the firmware that is being optimized. Once that is done, these new measurements will be rolled out. We made uh, changes to the API keys. The, we're following now the, the industry's best practices. So when you create a key, you see it one time, you will see it one time only. Uh, after that, the key will be, in, will be invisible. If you um, didn't make a copy, there's a rekey option. So you can quickly regenerate the key with the current permissions, just to make it uh, easy on you. We also had some problems with the API keys because the validation of the API key in the back end was way too compute intensive. So we came up with a new algorithm on how to fix that. And the current one is 20 times faster than the old one and uh, should cause us no more problems. We also overhauled the, uh, the page for making the keys. Uh, everything is now nice uh, front end uh, based. There's some other back end changes coming in the future. Uh, we're going to implement a credit research pool. So if you're a researcher, you want to run research on RIPE Atlas, um, you can request to use our credit research pool. Uh, there will be a form, you fill it out, you explain a little bit about what the research is that you want to do. You will tell us uh, how many credits you will need, roughly, uh, for how long, what the start date is, and you will tell us if you need any permissions change, like I need to have, you will be able to use 2,500 probes instead of the standard 1,000 uh, probes. You can put this all in the form. Once we approve it, you can use it. And that is implemented in the build me option that we already have. So once you're approved for the credit program, then if you create a measurement, you can choose the build me user, the credit pool, and then you can use that. You don't have to have any credits yourself anymore. We're also implementing many new API endpoints. There will be APIs for sponsors. There will be APIs for ambassadors. Uh, for instance, to like things like request new probes as an ambassador, to um, request t-shirts. All of that stuff will be automated. There will be an apply form for an ambassador, so you don't have to send an email anymore. You can just go to the website and say, I want to become an ambassador. Which reminds me, are there any current Ripe Atlas ambassadors present here? No? No. OK. Um, there's going to be a new settings API for things like the quotas that you have uh, for requesting credits. Uh, you will have much more control about the notifications that you will be getting from Atlas. Currently, essentially, the only notification you have is a monthly report. And you can get uh, a down probe down notification uh, when it loses internet connection. There will be many more notifications. 
that you can either turn off or on uh, in the future. Also, the, the existing APIs will be augmented with many more fields, which will be automatically documented uh, in the docs every time we make a change. So you don't, we don't, we're not going to really promote this. You will see it automatically if you read the documentation. So the really big changes and the more noticeable ones for the users are going to be the front-end changes. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, RIPE Atlas was originally developed as a Django application. Um, so we use Jinja templates um, and uh, the Postgres backend, uh, et cetera. We are moving that to a completely JavaScript-based uh, front-end app. We're using the Vue framework for it. So it will be a completely static website and every page will be powered by API calls to our backend. The example for this is already rolled out on production. Uh, this was introduced about two weeks ago. Uh, this is the new measurement form as we have it now. As you can see, the layout has been uh, very much simplified. It has still all the same options. It's just much easier to create a simple measurement. Uh, the form is much faster. The probe selection part has been much improved. Uh, things now like reuse probes from an existing measurement will actually work. Um, and we have some more sensible defaults. Like for instance, uh, resolve on probe was not the default for a measurement before. Right now it is because 99% of the time people would like that to have that one. And like I said, this is already on production. We also have a new measurement listing. Uh, this is also on production. This was uh, deployed uh, last Tuesday. Um, and it also streamlines uh, the, the, the listing of all the measurements. Um, it has a more clean separation of public and mine in two different tabs. And then within that, you can choose, for instance, to look at the built-in measurements, the anchoring measurements, or in my measurements, you have your favorites or your hidden measurements. Um, we also, but it's not maybe not that obvious, but you can filter on what you see in the column headers. So for instance, if you want to see only uh, the ping measurements, you can click on type all, then the dropdown will come and you can select, for instance, ping or trace route or DNS. Anytime, any change you make in the search will update the URL in the, in the browser. So all searches can now be saved. So if you have a particular search, you want to share it with somebody, then you can simply do that, make a bookmark and share it with other people. Similar to the, to the measurement listing, we now have new probe listing. The, the probe listing is very much similar to the, to the measurements. We have, you have the, all the public probes that you can see. You can see anchoring measurements. You can see my probes uh, that you have, the same as in the measurement listing. You can filter on things in the columns. Uh, this was uh, also rolled out to production last Tuesday. So the upcoming change that is not yet on production and is currently available only on the beta UI version of RIPE Atlas, to which all of you have access, I will share the link uh, in a little bit, is that one of the things we're going to change is that Atlas is going to be split into two parts. There's going to be an app part, which will focus on the core functionality of Atlas. So managing your probe, managing your anchor, uh, creating measurements, viewing the results of measurements, etc., And a promo page part, which will have all the information about what is Atlas, how can you use it, uh, links to documentation, how to's, uh, FAQs, all of that stuff. Um, an example here is the new menu. So you will see there is a dashboard. Then you can go to your probes, the anchors, measurement. Internet maps and statistics is still here. In my opinion, it should move to the promo pages, but that is still under discussion. So the biggest change is going to be the new dashboard. So based on the roles that you have, when you log into Atlas, the system will figure out what are the roles that you have. And for instance, this is my card in the new system. And you will see I'm a probe host, I'm an anchor host, I'm also an ambassador, I'm a sponsor. I can make HTTP measurements and I'm a member. Um, based on these roles, different cards will be shown or hidden. 
um, if you click on probe host, for instance, then only the cards that are related to you as a probe host will be shown. If you click on ambassadors, you will see only the cards related to you as an ambassador. All of these will also update the URL, so they will be saved. You can make them, put it as a bookmark. Um, and we're currently debating, do we want to save this in a settings object? So that if you make any changes, you move cards around, you say, I put the probe list on the top, I put my measurements on the bottom, that that can be saved. So that every time, wherever you are, and you open your dashboard, it will look the same. This is available uh, currently in the beta UI for everybody to, uh, to play around with. Some other cards that we have on this new dashboard are uh, the My Measurements, which is like a simplified version of the Mind tab in the measurement listing. Uh, the Probes, similar, a simplified version of uh, My Probes. You have the Messages, which will be uh, expanded. There will be new messages currently. Mostly what you see is when your probe gets tagged or untagged for some system tag. Um, in the future, this, this will also uh, have things like your probe disconnected, your probe reconnected, um, things like that. Um, there's an events card. So if you're going to a conference and you want to say like, yep, I'm going to be there so other people can see this, you can mark yourself and say, I'm going to go. So as you can see, I'm actually here. We also introduced uh, a new mapping framework, which is much, much faster. Uh, if you used the old maps before, you know that they took 15 to 20 seconds to load. These load, initially, there's a five second delay because it needs to load all the probes into its local cache. Once it has that, these maps are near instantaneous. It's much faster, much nicer. We're going to have clustered versions and unclustered. And so on the top, you see the unclustered map of the world. On the bottom is a selection of that uh, clustered, uh, pretty much this region. Uh, clustering is probably also going to be a user setting. So if you prefer the unclustered maps, you can set that. And then all maps will be unclustered. If you say like, no, I want my maps to be clustered, you can set that as well. Uh, the new settings page, this is a placeholder. This doesn't actually exist. Uh, this doesn't really do anything. This is just to show uh, what, it, what, it, what we're going, what we're thinking of putting on the settings page. Um, so you will have much more control over the app based on your roles. Certain things will be available. For instance, you, have, you can fill in your contact preferences if you're an ambassador or a sponsor. So you don't, when you apply for new probes, you don't have to refill in all your address information. It can just be pulled up. Um, if you're a sponsor, you can upload uh, your, your sponsor's logo. You can update the website that we, want, that we need to link to, things like that. And there will be full control over the notifications that you will receive and how you will receive them. Currently, we only support email, but we will support many more options uh, in the future. Um, then we have, for instance, like the anchor maps and the graphs. So the graphs, I only show this because we actually have a fully new mapping framework as well, which is also much faster, easier, has many more options. Um, the anchor map that wasn't working for, I think, about a year uh, now works again and has things like you can do, for instance, in this map, I show where all our Google anchors are. So you can actually look for the company. Um, you should try it. You can search for socks and you will find your anchor. Um, it's just much nicer and it's much, much faster, especially. We have a new, we're going to have a new uh, statistic page, which we'll see will also use the new um, graphing framework. Uh, we're still working on this. We don't know exactly how it's going to be, which brings me to my last point is how can you help? We really, really need a lot of feedback on, on the changes that we are planning and how, uh, what changes we're going to make exactly, how that will affect the users. And for that, we're going to add a survey that will be made available through the beta UI uh, in the very near future, like within a week or so, the link should be up. When you visit the beta UI, you can fill in the survey, tell us what you think, give us your opinions. Um, if you have any ideas on how to make Atlas better, how to improve it, how to, Anything, anything you can come up with, please share it with us. Um, you can also talk to me after lunch. I'm going to be here all day. 
really interested in what people have to say about Atlas. And otherwise, you can always email me. Um, and I'll make sure that our front end or UX people get the feedback. That's it. Okay, let's see whether we have any questions. Do you have any questions for Johanna Terbeista? If you have, just hold your hand and I will come to you. As I see in the YouTube chat, there is nothing. No questions for you on YouTube chat, no questions from the audience. That means everything is clear. Thank you, Johan.